Gus, so it's uh, On Will Ride from Kinetic Steps. Honorable is a PT, so he's a uh, personal trainer and he also uh, does online coaching and amongst other things, diet, diet plans and nutrition. So he's, 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 a, he's an all-rounder, so I'll, I'll, I'll let him explain what he does. But with that said, first of all, I'd like to thank you, UKMPL, for this wonderful opportunity and huh? for this wonderful event to be part of this event. Yeah. Thanks to all these other great individuals before me and all of you after me. Thank you. Can you please give a round of applause for UKMPL right now? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so with that said, you uh, know what? Presentation of Celestic Speech isn't really like this anymore. Who, 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 and go. No, it's a little bit different, uh, and hopefully it won't take too long. Um, but yeah, with that said, I'm going to ask you guys some questions to start off with. Right, can you please raise your hands up if you've struggled with, you know, your, your health and fitness journey or just in life, like in general? Can you please raise your hands up? All right. All right. If you haven't struggled, then you're not living, my friend. All right. So once again, please raise your hands up if you've learned something or uh, at least uh, have been grateful for, for those adversities. Yeah? Good. A little bit more, eh? <laughs> right, it's one of my little American also did, yeah? uh, His name was Napoleon Hill, and he said, strength and growth only come through continuous effort and struggle. Right? Now, struggle and adversity is the essence of what makes each and every one of us in this room so unique. Right, every one of you in this room must have your own set of experiences right, with adversities that has led you to become who you are today and who you will become tomorrow. And now, with that said, sometimes I'm amongst them here and I'm on the right. I am a personal trainer and online coach uh, by profession. I'm also the founder of Kinetic Steps. Also, I say the man behind Kinetic Steps. I don't really like to use the word founder just yet. Um, so, I currently work in Kyoto Auto Shop, but soon I will be moving to Farnborough. Uh, there's a building called uh, JDT Open in Farnborough, so you can come to me there if you want. Uh, as a coach, uh, I mainly specialize in sustainable weight management, so I help a lot of clients. The so majority of my clients are based on like weight loss goals or weight management. Uh, my training is mainly based around like you know functional fitness, mobility, you know, just a bit of everything, but like you know, it's kind of tailored around athletic and functional. Right? Uh, and with that said, the main ethos behind my brand, myself, revolves around sustaining the longevity of your overall health and fitness. Not just fitness, by the way, okay? There's a big difference between health and health and fitness. Right, so now you might be thinking, right, this guy's a PT, he's a uh, nutritionist, he's going to talk to us about food and nutrition and you know, what to do, what to exercise, what exercises are good. Actually, I'm not, it's your lucky day. Right? So you can visit my Instagram page at Kinetic Steps. For that I do upload, or when I try to upload as many content as I can. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I will receive some notifications later. Uh, and uh, instead, today I'm going to talk to you guys about something much more important. And that is the importance of consistency, uh, which Andrew earlier mentioned, uh, and embracing the struggle. Right? So the importance of consistency and embracing the struggle for growth, not only in fitness, but also in life. Right? Uh, now, I went to the quote by uh, Napoleon Hill earlier. Strength and growth come only through conscious and growth. A uh, struggle, sorry. Uh, now, the phenomenon of this quote can be seen in everyone's life. Well, right, I have seen it, I have witnessed it in my family, my uh, family's lives, my friends, peers, and even my role models that I look up to, right? They wouldn't be there without the struggle and the adversity. And most importantly, the person that I am today and the brand that I hold today in steps is the result of continuous effort and struggle. Right, so with that said, I'm going to give you a particular example of my client. Uh, and before I hear people whispering, oh, is he allowed to say that? Isn't that confidential? Right. Don't worry, I have asked her for her permission to use her name and her story. Right? <laughs> now, I have a client called Oslinda, her full name, Oslinda University. Uh, she's local, 
Uh, she's been training with me for just over a year now. Right, and look at the first seven to eight months, she lost about 20 kilograms. It's absolutely amazing. Right? 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So she lost about 20 kilograms. You know, she went from size, I believe, 14 to size 8. And you, I'm sure you women can appreciate how amazing that is. Right? Uh, you know, just to your old clothes, going shopping for your new, right? Top and skirts, and you know, shirts, all that. So I a fantastic relationship with food, fitness, and also with life. Now that sounds all great, right? So she everyone's laughing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, girl. What uh, if I told you, within the first four to six, eight weeks period, that wasn't the case. It was hardly making any progress, right? Going back to what he did earlier, right? Uh, it's hard, it was difficult. She wasn't making any progress, she was struggling, you know, she wasn't losing weight. I mean, imagine she's spending about, let's say, you know, I'll be quite transparent, she's spending about seven, eight hundred pounds in two months to, you know, for, to lose weight, to essentially look good, and she's not doing it, right? She's, she's losing weight, basically. She's like, I don't know, I'm not really losing weight. Right? I'm like, What's happening? And she was feeling demotivated, but I like to, uh, sorry, she was feeling demotivated and uh, the, 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 the progress that she was expecting wasn't quite there as well. But I would like to pause here quickly and I would like to ask you guys another question. How many of you here have tried new or different things but have failed or have given up because it was out of your comfort zone? Or because it was just too difficult? Can you raise your hands up? Can you go small? Alright, you better put your hands up guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised if I was with that fit because in today's you know, lives, today's day and age, it's very easy for people to quit, to give up. If they don't experience an instant result or instant gratification to their expectations. Right? And now, being amazing the trainer that I am, right? I had to tell her, I had to just show her. <laughs> I can assure her that, look, it will take time, right? It's going to take some time, it's not going to happen straight away, right? I've done it many times, uh, and, you know, progress in fitness, like progress in life, is never linear, right? There's always going to be waves of, waves of ups and downs, and we have to understand that. Uh, now, after following the plan, also, she, was, you know, she, was, she was doing great, uh, uh, so she was working really hard, and after following the plan consistently, she was starting to see results like crazy, right? The first eight weeks, no results. After eight weeks, she was like losing weight every, like almost every week, you know? Because what I do is with my clients, I, uh, I record their uh, results and I look at the graph and I've got all the data and the bar was going down and down, like the graph was like, you know, there was a big trend. She was losing weight constantly. And uh, yeah, she was getting fitter, she was getting stronger. The, the, the clothes that she was wearing was getting baggier. Who remembers the early 2000 hip hop days, you know? Like baggy jeans and baggy trousers. Yeah, she was, she was, she was, she was like transforming, transforming into that kind of, uh, you know, like just, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she, was, she was great, she was driven. Uh, yeah, we have, a great, we have a great relationship. And fast forward to this day, she's still maintaining that, right? Sustaining that, because that's what Kinetic Steps is about. And, you know, we, we have new goals that we're working towards right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's been fantastic, it's been fabulous. Now, my question is like, you know, obviously I'm just taking you through this you know, journey of custom plan, no? Now, do you think she would have achieved this greatness, or do you think she would have achieved, you know, she would have transformed her life or her health and fitness if she had given up in the first eight weeks of her program? No, right, she stuck by, she stuck by, she worked hard, she believed in herself, and, you know, uh, when, when things were difficult, she kept going, obviously I was by her side, and, you know, all the hard work paid off, you know, she embraced the struggle that it led to fruition. All right. Now, with that said, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more about kinetic steps and how kinetic steps is uh, related, or uh, how it, yeah, how it is related to this whole concept of struggle and consistency. Now, when I embarked my uh, on my personal training journey, when I first started, uh, honestly, I really didn't think I would be in this place today. I 
I really didn't know the was standing here. Uh, so when you can't get out of the lunch, you know, I was going to come down, I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, going back, I, you know, even before I became a PT, I didn't have any money to become a you know personal trainer uh, because I was giving a lot of the course. I didn't have money. Uh, I was I was pretty broke. I was working part time at the time. I was you know I was working bare minimum hours. I think my contract in hours was eight eight hours. I was doing you know, I was doing some all the time in now and then, but it was very minimum pay. I didn't have any knowledge on business. I had to build a business. I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know how health and fitness space operated. I didn't have anyone to look up to. I didn't have certainly not a Nepali personal trainer that I could look up to. So um, yeah, it was it was um, it was difficult. Uh, so in my first year of starting PT as well, I must have had like hefty numbers of six clients in the whole year, right? <laughs> In the whole year, so you can imagine six clients in the whole year. I was making pennies, right? I was making pennies, and I was just like, "Oh my God, I got this up like this, right?" Uh, so I was struggling a lot, and uh, on top of that, COVID happened. Right? I think COVID kind of like affected all of us financially, emotionally, psychologically. Uh, so it was it was hard, and I will never forget this day. Right? One morning during lockdown, I was lying down on my bed. Right, in this single room that I had rented out. And I opened up my phone, I uh, checked out the back balance, and it was 70 p. Right? I had 70 p in my account. That was all I was entitled to. This was when I was living on my own. No savings, no real income, just absolutely broke. I was actually heartbroken, I was devastated. Now, have you ever lied down in your bed, bed? You know, once you're staring at space, I'm just like, what is life, man? That was me. That was me. And I still do that every now and then. I'm pretty sure every one of you do this as well. Right? That was that was me. So millions of thoughts crossed my mind and I was just like, what can I do? I had all the reasons to give up. I could come back to my parents to get easy way out. But I didn't. I did it. So you know what I did instead? I did it super hard. I worked harder than ever. Right? Um, you know, hard, hard work has always been like the second nature to me. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a you know, trait that, I, that I'm not afraid to show off. And um, yeah, I decided to work harder than ever to build my business and prepare for when the, gym, the gyms would open. So it was literally go hard or go home. And now, on this note, I'm going to you know, uh, give you a quote by Peter Marshall. That's it. When we long for life for difficulties, right? When we long for life without difficulties, we remind us that oak grow strong in opposing wind, and diamonds are made under pressure. And I was ready to be a diamond. Dollars back to America like a few years ago. It was, it was breaking away. It was so slow, bloody laptop. I uh, was annoying me, and I was in a single room, right, a confined space. You guys know what single room looks like. It's absolutely it was horrible. Huh? Uh, and I was putting, yeah. believe it or not, yeah. I was putting back yeah. eighty hours of work a week. Shit, that's how I was working every day. I woke up, I got my laptop, I would, uh, you know, everything from my website, logo, from everything like. Uh, content creation, everything. I even you know, established my open my own, uh, online coaching business at the time. I was working, 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 working. I was literally just there. I think the lambda might have thought like I died or something. You know what I mean, right? And, and at the same time, I was still looking after myself. I was looking after my health because I was still on PT. You know, I've got to follow up. Well, now, uh, so time passed, and uh, after the lockdown eased up, I got back into uh, personal training again when the gyms opened. This is saying things picked up real fast, real fast, as we can. And it has never been the same again, right? In the last 12 months alone, I have carried out more than 1,000 hours of personal training sessions, right? I have been a fully booked personal trainer for most of the time. I have worked with hundreds of clients, both online and in person. With my expertise, I've trained and transformed all sorts of people for all sorts of achievements. Right? I've helped clients lose more than 45 pounds up to 20 kilograms of weight. I've trained a client for their first 6,000 mountaineering expedition. 
in January, I set up this small group where I help half, you know, uh, some of my clients and a few more individuals to run their first ever half marathon in minus 10 degrees. I have also helped many clients recover from all sorts of injuries like sciatica, back pain, frozen shoulder, ankle, knee, hip injuries. I know some of you here can relate to it, right? Uh, it, yeah, it's crazy how things can change so quick. Now, you might be wondering, what is this guy trying to say? Like, why is he showing up? Maybe I am a little bit. But, well, I'm only giving you a contrast and comparison of where Kennedy Steps was three years ago, or this is three and a half years ago, and where it is now, right? Uh, and where it might be in a few years' time, you never know. I'm, I'm using my brand Kennedy's Kinetic steps as an example to convey a point that if you work hard, if you stay consistent and embrace the struggle, no matter how much you're struggling, big or small, progress is inevitable. And with continuous progress, success will follow up. Right? So if you're going through a rough patch right now, right, whatever it is, whether it's that you know you've gained extra weight, uh, you've gained, whether it's a new business that you're embarking on. Maybe it's emotional, maybe it's you know physical, maybe it's psychological, maybe it's a mental battle that you're fighting, right? Keep believing, keep moving forward, one step at a time. And now with that said, I am going to end this speech by stating a powerful quote once again by Christine Kane, right? This is one of my favorite quotes, I actually love this. Sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you're you've been buried. So I'm gonna say that again. Sometimes when you, you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but you've actually been planted. Thank you. One thing we did when we when we were organizing this event was we put a story saying who should we have? And Kinetic Steps had four different people saying Kinetic Steps should be there. So well done. Our next uh, tennis guest speaker is going to be Sula, uh, representing any time fitness after. So they're, they're actually the owners. So Sula, um, along with uh, Tara, Amit and Kromod, they've actually, they're the owners of any time fitness after. So that's a great achievement. So I'll let you talk about it. Sula. I'm going to start with two billion pounds, yeah? So two billion pounds is a lot of money. I suppose if you say one billion pounds, that's still a lot of money, that's 50%. If you cut it down to 25%, which comes to about 500 million, that's also a lot of money. 100 million, that's also a lot of money. 100 million pounds is 5% of the market size of health and fitness in 2021, when we have COVID. Now, when we don't have COVID, like now, I don't know the, the numbers, but it's probably gone up since 100 million. If we have a bit of that 100 million, we could eat nandos for life. We can eat nandos for life. So, yeah. so in this presentation today, I'll be talking about certain things. The first point would be to give shout out to two people. The second bit would be introduction about us. The third one would be the journey. The fourth uh, is a bit of pros and cons of joining the franchise. As always, uh, the fifth one is how many members, well actually it's a question, I'm gonna ask it when the time comes. Uh, the one after that is banks, government schemes. The one after that is PT wanted. We want some PTs. Yeah? And the one after that is a top modern channel. So these are the points I'm going to discuss today. So okay, the first bit is shout out. So I'm going to give a massive shout out to Kinetic Steps. I call him Kinetic Shoddy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is legit fixed my knees. Uh, I had business studies in both of my knees. I went from like almost all sort of NHS or whatever, like fissures and shit from um, Farnham to like Camberley. Well, yeah, he was the guy to actually fix it, yeah? If you have a frozen shoulder, can you step and fix it? If you have a broken knee, yeah, he's gonna fix it. If you have a broken heart, my ah. friend's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix everything. So the next guy, now this guy, I forgot to mention, is SMG therapy. So he does obviously like massage therapy and stuff. The bits that he forgot to mention was he does scraping. So he's gonna lie down on the bed, make you stretch your arms out and stretch the lats. It's painful, but the mobility you're gonna get after that is amazing. So next thing he does is gonna cut, like do copying in the upper back and work on like your glutes, hamstrings, release it. He does everything. He gives you everything except the happy ending. That's all he needs to do. My man right there. It's amazing. Now earlier we had onto the knees. He said like 
She told me the guy could praise, like he had big arms, whatever. Yeah, I was excited when she mentioned big arms. But she said tall, so I was like, I leave it, I leave it. That's alright, it's almost gone. So, the bit that I'm gonna say about this introduction. So, who are we? We are four guys. So, it's me, myself, Silo Frista. Then we have the prettiest boy in Fondro, Tad the Tank. Also known as Tarabal the Guru. Also known as the pretty boy next door. So, after that, we have Mr. Amit Kumarja. So, he's an IT manager, he works in an aerospace company. The next guy is Promot, he works in finance. Promot does almost everything. He does like bands, he does music, he does like paints, everything. He's graphics, like the guy is extremely talented. So these are us. So the journey, how do we start? Well, during the COVID period, uh, me, Tarai, Mondai were like working out. Mondai go on, man. And then like, Tarai says like, oh, man, you know like this gym called Jets, you know? They're gonna give you the weights, like you can take it home. But you gotta be a member with them. I was like, okay, then. I'm gonna join them today. So I went to their website and the option was join Jets for $29.99. And the option next to it was own a franchise. It didn't have a price tag, but it had like query. So I was like, oh whatever, let's just go for it. And just like send the query, they send the email, and I had a discussion with Tarada, right? And I had a discussion with like other two Omitai and Komu. So out of the blue, on a random workout, we said, okay, we're gonna own the gym rather than be a member. That sounds a lot interesting, right? So yeah, we we almost went to all of the gyms, gym franchises and gyms like the gym and your gym are not franchises. So we had a conversation with everyone and then we reached the point to go ahead with Enzyme Fitness. Now the question is how long did it take? Do you wanna, do you guys wanna have a guess how long it might have taken us to like open a gym? I guess? Anyone? Eight, eight, eight months? Three years. Who's in three years? Exit one more. <laughs> Two years. It was yeah, two point seven eight. So I'll say that's three. It's very close though. So it takes three years to open a gym. Um, during the process, I would say we got more we got more rejection than a guy that's try, tries to get on with the grow in a night out. We had rejections like right, left, and center. We were rejected from the bank. We were rejected from like landlords. We were rejected from the people who were trying to sell the gyms. So we have all sorts of rejection. Now, if someone had told us it's going to take us three years to own the gym, I swear to God, I don't think we would go ahead with this bullshit, you know? It took us three years to do that, like, with anything. So the thing that I was trying to tell here is, like, if, you, if you're supposed to run for an hour, unless you're, like, good in you know, it's special. <laughs> but if you're supposed to run for an hour, right, and then a guy comes and says, would you run in the treadmill for an hour? You would say, no. Why? Because that shit is tiring. Two minutes in, you're sweating. And five minutes, yeah, like, uh, whatever. But imagine you're supposed to start at six, and then in an hour it becomes seven, right? Whether you run, whether you don't run, the seven o'clock is gonna come there anyway. So might as well go and run. You know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. It is what it is. So that's it. It is what it is. So yeah. Now I move on to the pros and cons of training a franchise. Um, I think to own a business and be a franchise, I would always recommend you guys open heartedly to own your business rather than be a franchise. Why? Because you pay a lot of money to the franchise. But why would they join? Because they are good. They know their shit. You can learn a lot of stuff from them, but you gotta pay them on a monthly basis, which are for marketing expenses, royalties, but it's kind of worth it if you wanna um, start something where you don't know much about. Well, we do know stuff about Gym, because Tarada has been like competing like every single year. But the thing that we didn't know is what are the people that actually help gym make money? For example, uh, how many guys go to the gym? The gym, yeah. How many members? Okay, I'm more fancy because he's a PT, you know he's a shit. So how many members do you think a normal the gym has? Have a guess. It's busy like you, know, you see like 50 people in the gym and stuff. How many members? 1,000. And anyone who gets this bad, I was expecting like 250, no 500. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is like, no, can you get it? The answer is 3,700 members. Average the gym. And the break even mark is 1,000. So from 1,000 to 3,500, like basically 2,500. If you charge 20 pounds, that's all profit. And they are making it like, every single month. That's how much like a normal the gym makes. 
However, in franchises, it's hard for us because we don't have that many members, but we are trying our best to do whatever we can. So that's, that's the only members we have. Now, the second thing, uh, the, the point I'm going to talk about this one is banks and government schemes, right? We've been, like, we've been visiting all gyms, businesses, and things like that, and one bit of conversation that we're missing is in the Nepalese community is about how we use government scheme loans for our business. A lot of people use something called bounce back loan, which they can like uh, 10, 20 euro. But except that not many people are using civils, are less, something like this. So I really want to introduce you guys to these sort of loans. The British government is giving this opportunity to everyone, use it. If you don't know what it is, like Google, try to learn what the, uh, those things are. I think you'll gain a lot of um, like benefits. You gotta go, you know, you gotta go. Now, the point after this one is PT1. One we desperately need, but desperately need the Nepalese PT in any time fitness aspect. Because there is like a lot of Nepali community over And all these like people in our like PTs in our gym are not Nepali. So they're struggling to get those um, mansions. Right? If you come to our gym as a PT, yeah, I swear we're gonna make like a whole leaflet for you. You can have your pictures, like front and back, whatever pose you wanna do, like you tell everything. We're gonna put it to the media, yeah, we're gonna do anything. That's how much we need a Nepali PT. Okay. The point after this one is top number. So now we were thinking to use this community on, uh, to be involved in various events that we can sell almost endless. So for example, if a guy from the US looks to UK and about to and sees like workout stuff like this, imagine if we get into events like Top Mother, Ninja Warrior, like not the actual um, competition, but like even when we go for a day out, we talk to more and stuff like that, you can use this for anything. If you're a PT and you have these things in your um, like Insta, it's more sellable I think. If you're a gym owner, it's extremely sellable. If you're a community, it's extremely sellable. So if you guys want to get involved, uh, the first one we might do is 29 or 30th of July, top mother. I think it's southwest or something like I don't know where it is, it is somewhere. Like, you gotta Google it, but 29, 30 July. I think it's gonna be amazing. The big half of this is if anyone is going to camp in summer, like in the beach area, and wants to do the quick work, feel free to go to our gym. You don't have to pay anything as long as you're not from camp. Because if you have to get and you're not paying anything, like, we can't do it. <laughs> so if you're not from Ken, you want to come to our gym, good workout, yeah, like if you message me, like anyone out of there, I don't know if he checks his messages, he's just quite a lot, but yeah, like any, any day you want to come, you can do it, no problem. And the final bit, because one more said a really uh, motivational quote, I think I should probably say something as well. So, <laughs> Just leave it to his name because like, he's a very close friend of him. So I would say, we, four of us guys here, I would say we're very average in terms of education level, in terms of height, in terms of like anything. We are very average, right? It took us three years to do like to own the gym. However, I think if you guys had the same amount of time, you guys could have done quicker than us. If we can do something like owning a gym first, like fitness franchise gym in UK in three years. If you guys put your mind and like effort into it, you guys can nail that shit in like half a year again. So if we can do it, my God, like you guys can do anything in terms of business, like whatever. Just go for it. That's all. Thank you. Our next guest is changing into their attire, so uh, we've got a time to kill. So we can do like a Q and A. So does anyone have questions? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. I think I'm going to have one. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to talk about myself because I was both focused on my friends and stuff. So um, we bought a gym that was already up and running. Right? Shall I go more details? Why would you? Yeah, so if you see a gym, let's say the gym, uh, you think you would think like it wouldn't cost good as much, right? Since 2020, the material cost went up by 43%. So to own, like to build a gym, forget about marketing, forget about like, equipment and stuff, just the gym. To build it, it's gonna take you about six to eight months. 
the cost is 800,000 pounds for the gym, right? How big is the space? I would say about 7,000 to 10,000 square feet. It's not that big. That's a lot of money. Now, do we have that money? Nah, we don't have that money. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna look for gyms which we can buy, which is already which already exists. There is something called publicity cost, which means like for example, if we make a lot of noise here and someone lives upstairs, they can complain and the council doesn't allow. So for that, we need soundproof things. So these these facilities cost you about a thousand pounds. And I don't know why this only works in UK. But here they do. So, so like we didn't really have a choice. So we uh, looked for resale options, right? And the option that we really, uh, the found was Ashford. And the reason for that is the gym we have now is 20,000 square feet. It's the biggest anti fitness in the UK. Um, I haven't been to any gyms in the north, but as far as I know, that's the biggest gym I've ever been to in the UK. Uh, JD gym that, that comes out of Farnborough is still smaller than the gym that uh, we have. We were very lucky with this, but the guy who sold that gym to us, that guy made a lot of money. That was a very smart guy, he was very witty. Um, what he did was, shall I get a bit more? Uh, yeah, I just get two minutes. So what he did was, right, we, were, we came to this point where like, we were supposed to buy this gym. Writing the brief word. We're not writing it. I was solicitor is writing this. So he says, oh, I don't agree with this one. I'm like, okay, he's solicitor probably not agree with this. I'm like, okay, fine, I will change it, we changed it. And then he says, no, I still don't agree with this. And I'm like, we change it again. We told the solicitor, change, 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 change. At the end, our solicitor cost us like 20,000 pounds each. 20,000 pounds for like, I'm writing an agreement. This guy was writing his agreement himself. Would you believe that? Now, I don't know how it worked, but he wrote stuff like as an agreement, and he sent it to us, and he said, oh, we can't do something. And he did, because we were it, right? But we saved a lot of money, it cost a lot of money to us. I remember about it, not really, because we learned something from the guy. And what I give you, the situation to you guys, it might work to you as well. You know, next time someone's trying to try to buy something, buy that shit yourself and tell them to like check with their solution. <laughs> Let them like pay the money, you know? But yeah, that is that. I think I'm done now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> If you're already in Ashford and already joined the gym, cancel that gym and join any time fitness in Ashford. Yeah? We'd like to welcome our next uh, guest speakers. So they're they're um, Saguma and Rosie, and they're representing Himali Monkeys. So they're the UK Himali Fighting Group. Each 
other two times. It becomes more clever. And the third part is you meet new people every day. And bouldering uh, uh, or climbing is not about strength. It's about strategy. And bear in mind that not every person can climb the route the same. It's about the, the size, flexibility, and experience. And in the climbing session, what we do is we do a good long stretching for 15 to 20 minutes. And this is to protect yourself from cramps. Because you don't want to be climbing and you get in a cramp in the middle of the day. Uh, I would encourage everyone uh, to try climbing and boring. Uh, it's not just about the strength, it's about the community, uh, empowering and motivating in a positive way to solve their problems. I would like to, uh, so if you would like to know more about climbing, we are definitely here, you can come and talk with us. And we do have an Instagram page as well, which is in my country, you can follow us for further updates. And in the future, we will be holding outdoor climbing trips. So if you'd like to come and join us for the trip, do get in touch. And lastly, we would like to thank the UK Memories Fitness for giving us the opportunity. Thank you. This is Instagram Live. <laughs> I've got it for me. <laughs> um, just to uh, add on that, bordering or you know, going rock climbing is very addictive. So if you if you if you've never done it before, just try it. It might be your next you know thing. So do give it a try. So now, thank you for being patient. We've gone through 11 guest speakers, 11 guest groups, 17 speakers, and now we've got our final uh, guest speaker, Ruden from Run the Books. So. You know, but um, he's, he's very talented. He's run three, <laughs> three marathons in 24 hours. He's done the Snowdonia Ultra Trial 100 kilometer uh, run. And he's also in the Inclusion Advisory Board for the London Marathon. So give it up. And he's a hope racer as well. So he's runs the work first. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, that was my speech done. I was actually outside trying to write my speech and I wrote hi and that was it. Because I didn't prepare anything because I was uh, busy planning the run this morning. Who ran this morning? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Is that right? Excellent. Huh? Change your life. So that's what we do basically, we change lives. Um, so we are run dogs, I'm Ruden. Um, I, what do I do? I run around. Um, I recently ran the London Marathon three times, as I said. Um, I don't know why I did that. Um, so I give back to raise money for Senior Bar, uh, great charity. Um, I also ran the 100k in Snowdonia, which was extremely tough, and I couldn't stay awake. I was just falling asleep on the mountains. Um, but in my mind, I knew I was going to get it done because the mindset I have, once I sign up, that's when I complete it. Because I decide and the rest, is, I just enjoy the journey. So, um, run the balls. We have runners all over the place. Any run the balls here? Um, who's, from, who's run the balls from Ken? You are so quiet. Uh, Hampshire run the boats. London. Okay, so we're everywhere basically. And we're not we're not athletes, we're not proper runners, we're not Moby Farah. We're just like normal people that just like to have a laugh, move forward together and do positive things. So that's what we are. So you don't have to like train for a year to join us. You just join the family, have a coffee with us, go party with us, and then you become a running ball, basically. Um, what else should I talk about? <laughs> uh, what else? So, recent, 
London Marathon, we had the biggest representation from our community. We have loads of friends from Round the Box, from Hammer Round Club, shout out. Um, Nepal Round, MK. So, yeah, the way I sort of get my place is through London Marathon. Uh, so I've built up a relationship with the London Marathon over the last three, four years. So they were sort of following our journey and what we were doing. And then they were like, you guys are cool, come have a meeting in our HQ. I went there and they were like, this is how we want to support you. Uh, this is how we want to work together in the future, this that. So now I'm able to sort of give the community opportunities. So get people places if, they, uh, if they're up for a challenge of running another marathon and they show up. And the big half, so the big half is a massive event. It's a half marathon, and the first year we did it, we had 40 runners, which is quite good. And then the next year I was like, okay, we're gonna go 100. So we actually had 150. So we just, we take over events everywhere we go. We, we don't just go there, run and go home. We just, like, the energy, the vibes that we have everywhere we go, like, you know we're here. So um, this year we're gonna have at least 175, 200 more. So if anyone wants to join us, let me know. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. Um, I want to give a prize to someone. Anyone want a prize? Yeah. Volunteer? <laughs> she put her hand up first. Well, should we get her to do something? Um, and now I need someone to tell her what she has to do. Anyone? Give her a challenge. Burpees! Burpees! Plank! Plank! Ten squats. Ten squats, ten squats, ten squats. Yeah. Okay, 10 squats. Come on, give us some. Yeah. 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 Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What a Lamborghini. <laughs> so first you get some men. <laughs> <Right here. laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and she gets some chocolate. <laughs> and a face mask because COVID's coming back. <laughs> and a trophy. So basically what she just did, she just said, yeah, I'm coming up, I don't know what I'm doing. And she just stepped up to the challenge and look, she's won that life. And her life changed forever. So that's basically what we do. We just like, oh, that's an idea. Oh, that's an opportunity. And then we just go and we do it. We don't think, yes, no, maybe, no. We just decide, I'm up there, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna have a good experience. I'm gonna make a positive impact and we just go. And that's it. So I think if everyone has that mindset, we can change, we can change a lot of things, change the world, and um, yeah, that's it, boom, done.
So I'd just like to thank all of our 18 guest speakers from 12 different groups. So a round of applause to everyone that's done. This event wouldn't really have been a success without you guys stepping up and you know stepping up to the platform, you know, talking like a lot of the speakers have never done public speaking and I, I just have to say that they must be lying because they were really good. So yeah, thank you. Uh, we'd like to thank the audience as well for coming. Um, we'll be starting Acoustic Night in 13 minutes, so it'll start at 7. During the time now, it's more for networking. So if you, if you have a question, you can kind of find these uh, guest speakers and kind of talk to them. If you haven't already, we've got dinner being served at quarter past seven, so if you haven't got food already, so you can go to the front desk to uh, get the food ticket. And we'll also be doing the fitness challenge at the back there, and there's wonderful prizes. So there's three signature music festival free tickets to be won. There's um, about four UKNPO t-shirts that you can win, and then there are other prizes as well. So yeah, thank you everyone. Cheers.